boys and girls. It's when we feel like at a clock. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. Coming to you live from my Seattle high-rise apartment. Oddly enough, I live in Alberta, but that's besides the point. Um, thank, oh, I want to thank you all for all the subscriptions and follows and all of those sort of things like that. It's been freaking awesome. Please keep it up. It's great. Um, we have been doing a series, and you know who I am, right? Pearl of Wisdom. Everybody knows that. Uh, we have been doing a series on each team in the off season, where they're going, how they've been doing, so on and so forth like that. Uh, we've had some great guests. We've had uh, John from Off the Wall Hockey, who I'm going to be doing something with in about a half an hour. Um, we had, um, of course, Joe, Professor Joe. He's on all the time. We had Delhi. Anthony Shardelli, one of the finest Anaheim writers in the land, who's also going to be doing one uh, when we do Boston on Friday. We're going to do Boston, the Boston Bruins, so I hope you're all on the edge of your seats for that. And we're, we will be having Steel Flyers. If you don't know who Steel is, Steel Flyers, go to steelflyers.com. It's going to be one of the finest websites in the land. He also already has a great podcast on there. And uh, it's going to be amazing. All the sports, a live feed running through it, and all the sports done by great writers. Um, it, it's sort of in the idea of Hockey Buzz, but not really a rumor thing like Hockey Buzz is. But the, the idea of the uh, website will be something like that, where you can pick a team, check it out, what you hear all you need to hear about it. In fact, he's even talking about getting a getting it so you will get um, updates on your uh, email on things that are happening, notifications to tell you what, what's going on. So you are updated on all the fine goings on in all your favorite sports. So we'll be doing that. But today we're going to be doing the Calgary Flames. I couldn't find anybody to uh, do the Calgary Flames with me. Poor Calgary. Poor Calgary Flames. Uh, so I'm doing it by myself. Which is okay. And if anybody out there wants to join me in this fine frolic and uh, with the team, you just go ahead and let me know and we can maybe set that up. Show me your work and all that sort of stuff like that. And we can set up a time and place and we can you can enjoy in this. Also, just tell me in the comment section what you think about how my assessment of each team as in Calgary here as well, because I love that too. I love talking in the comment section to all y'all. Sure do. All right, let's look at the Calgary Flames. Okay, Calgary Flames. What did they do this so far this year? Free agency wise, they uh, they went after a pretty big pretty big fish. They like to say, didn't they? Jacob Markstrom, 30 years old, goaltender. Six million dollars. Six million dollars for the next five years. One, two, three, four, five, six years. He'll be 36 at the end of this contract. Risky. Risky. He, he's he been a decent goaltender up until last, last year where he reached new heights. Late bloomer as far as being exceptional status or close to that, I guess. A .917 is pretty good, pretty darn good. Are we going to see an increase in that? Is he going to be able to hold that? That should be interesting to see. Could be problems here. Could be problems. Markstrom, uh, I don't know. I honestly don't know. And you know me, I usually have an answer for you. But I think it's possible he stays somewhere around the 9.10 to 9.17 range for the rest of his career, which may be enough for a lot of teams. But will it be for Calgary? That's the question. Of course, the big question here is this has been all over the land, isn't it? Current cap space, 3285000 uh, Not huge, not great, um, but it's something. And a lot of teams don't even have that. So they do have a little bit of wiggle room as they go through. I like to say that. Say that with me. Wiggle room. Wiggle room. Yes, I like that. Wiggle room. Anyways, uh, so what else did they do? They went and got Mr. Christopher Tana from the Vancouver Canucks. Uh, two players from the Vancouver Canucks, Jacob Markstrom and Vic Christopher Tana. I am sure that they talk to each other quite a bit and are quite happy that they get to be together uh, and not move too far away for their family. 
Uh, 30 years old as well. Four-year contract, four and a half million. All the money for a guy like Christopher Tanev. I have personally seen Christopher Tanev. To me, it looks like his drop-off is getting more severe every year. Uh, I'm a little concerned about this contract, to tell you the truth. If he can hold on and be a top four uh, defenseman, then it probably doesn't look that bad. But when you consider they had Brody, who went to Toronto, for only 500000 more, I honestly would prefer Brody over Tanov for the next four years. It's possible that Brody, being from the Toronto area, really just wanted to go back to Toronto. It's possible. And then they just had to go with what they could find. But I honestly have not liked the regression in Tanov's game. So we will see if uh, maybe it's possible, being in this Calgary defense, let's look at their defense besides that. Mark Giordano, 37 years old, still holding strong, but not Norris caliber anymore. Two more years left on his contract. Uh, so he's definitely a one-two still at this stage of his career, even at this stage of his career. Noah Hannafin has got some growing to do. It's, if we forget, he's only 23 years old, don't we? Um, they, they still believe in him. They still think he can be a top four. As of right now, he's kind of on the cusp of not being a top four as a left defenseman. But then they have two spectacular players here in Rasmus Anderson and Yuso Valimaki. Um, Valimaki was injured last year. Uh, he's uh, on loan right now to, I believe, Finland. Uh, will come back for the regular season and is ready to play. This guy is a um, solid all-around player, very good defensively. Um, just look at his uh, stats a little bit. 6'2", 188 from Finland. Uh, doesn't back down at all. Uh, doesn't put up a lot of penalty minutes, but doesn't back down from anybody, any, anyone either. Put up 14 points in 20 games in the AHL before he got injured. Three points and 24 in the NHL. Probably won't be a huge point producer, but as far as a defensive, I mean, he will put up his points over time, though, I think. Not bad. 30 point guy, maybe top end, but for the guy, a guy that plays this position almost perfect. Seriously, I love him. Fantastic guy. 22 years old, going to be great. And Rasmus Anderson, he's just an absolute beast. Uh, we're going to be uh, probably playing top line minutes. So Chris Tanev will be trying his hand probably with Hannafin or Valimaki. I would prefer him to play with Valimaki to start. Um, Hannafin maybe with uh, uh, Shylington if he plays on the, put him on the right side or whatever the case may be. I don't know, whichever one that they feel best, but I just get the feeling that Valimaki and Tana will work out really well. He can help them with uh, playing a veteran, showing Juso how to play the defensive game. And, uh, but I, it's possible they could go Tanov and Hannafin because Hannafin's more of a puck mover than Tanov and Valimaki Shylington because Shylington's more of a puck mover than Valimaki. Interesting indeed. A lot of matchups there. The fact of the matter is that defense isn't bad is what I'm trying to say. Calgary's defense is not bad. It's not really their problem. Markstrom may look pretty darn good behind that defense considering the defense in Vancouver was a little shaky last year and he put up some good numbers. Now let's go to the forwards. Uh, actually, why don't we go to make this a little easier. Nice that they have their first, second, and two-thirds next year, by the way. Uh, they do have a manage to keep their first-round picks a lot, Calgary, which is good. Hitting on them, on the other hand, is hit or miss, but like most places, anyways. Oops, I didn't. What I did, I wanted to go like this, and I wanted to hit the depth chart. Didn't I? Yeah, depth chart. Okay. This is where we have a problem with Calgary, and this is where I think it's possible that Calgary doesn't even make the playoffs next year for some of the improvements that other teams have made. Um, there was a lot of talk up here that the Johnny Goudreau was on his way out. They were going to trade him. Now, well, I really thought that it was going to happen. I thought Taylor Hall to Calgary was almost a done deal and that they were going to trade Goudreau to 
bolster their uh, lower lines and take Taylor Hall. Didn't happen. Uh, I don't know why it didn't happen, to tell you the honest truth. They could have given Taylor Hall the $8 million, I guess maybe because Taylor Hall was never looking at a long-term extension. Not for the money that was being offered out there. They would have had to give him the eight nine million for a long term, and with the COVID situation, it's possible that Calgary is not wanting to play to the cap this year, and maybe that's just the way it worked out. They said, "Go to Buffalo, see how you like it. Maybe we'll try it again next year." Anyways, Johnny Goudreau. People say Johnny Goudreau has to play better, and we'll look at his stats, and we'll find that. He did not have a spectacular year last year, or last year point-wise. 58 points is not great. 99 points in 82 was good. That was his best year he's had so far. Uh, went to the World Championships with the USA and only had two points, and it's kind of downhill from there. I sensed a little dissatisfaction in Calgary, and one of the reasons why is there's been a whole lot on that guy's shoulders. Uh, Sean Manahan is a good center. He can be a center, a number one center on a lot of teams. I mean, 82 points in 78 games looks really good. 64 and 74 looks really good. I don't know, though. If I watch, when I watch him, I don't see a number one center. I don't see a two-way guy. There's something about his game that doesn't make it me feel that way and I think a lot of it has to do with Johnny Goudreau props him up quite a bit he level, he lays passes on that guy's stick that uh, could increase anyone's numbers and that's what it seems like to me that happens there um, they traded Hamilton uh, last year if you remember and one of the guys they got back with Elias Lindholm nothing wrong with that first line right winger no doubt about it puts up good numbers one of the best defensive wingers in the game. Love it. Great. No problems. Now we get down to the second line, and we're looking at Mangio, Panny, Backlund, and Kachuk. Let me tell you, Michael Backlund's not a second-line center on a good team. He's just not. He's a good two-way guy. He can put up points in that. He can play on your second line. But if your first-liner is Sean Manahan, it better not be Mikel Backlund. And this is where Cal the problem lies with Calgary. Their depth overall in their lineup for scoring and forwards is not strong enough. That's why they didn't do well in, in the playoffs, and that's why Johnny Goudreau, uh, who points seem to be dropping, I think, because they see, teams are seeing that you get rid of Johnny and the rest of the team, there's not much to go except for this fellow here, the stud of all studs, Matthew Kachuk course um if i'm you might as well if i'm uh if i'm uh the coach honestly if you might as well put backlin here with goudreau he's already propping up monahan anyways and put kachuk here at right wing with goudreau and just let those guys beast away beast away make johnny feel better give him a sense of accomplishment that he gets to play with him great guy like a chuck it's going to improve him a lot i think and then i would move uh monahan down here in the second line and he would play with lynn home and mangiopani and what you have there is um you know a decent second line which you already have a decent second line if you keep it as mangiopani back and a chuck and it's not even decent maybe even less than decent then we get to the Lucic, Bennett, and Dubé, and everybody's saying, wow, that line played so well together and stuff. And actually, as a duo, they probably played a lot over their heads than they are. But to say they were a great third line, I wouldn't say so. It's uh, how, much, how much is Milan Lucic, how much more speed is that guy going to lose? He can't lose anymore, can he? <laughs> He, he looks like a statue on the ice. It's it's terrible out there. And then Sam Bennett, turns out he's a third line center. And there was someone, someone when they were making the decision about Sam Bennett, uh, people were saying that they Buffalo Sabres should have took Bennett. Everybody was screaming about it. There was a guy back then who was saying that 
But Sam Bennett probably won't be much more than a third line center. Maybe a darn good one. And as it turns out, he's not really. But he is a good playoff performer. That guy was me, by the way. Uh, Milan Lucic, Sam Bennett, and Dylan Dubé. It's not a great line. Um, the, it's As far as the rest of the league is concerned, it's in the bottom half as far as third liners are concerned. And now we go down to their fourth line this year. Uh, who, I'm trying to think of oh, some guys that left. Uh, anyways, I can't remember. But Zach Ronaldo, Ryan, Derek Ryan, and Glenn Godden. Glenn Goddard's a little guy. They're going to give him a chance. Put up some big numbers in the AHL. I really don't know how his game's going to translate. It's going to be interesting to see. Um, he's, he deserves it. He put up the points in the AHL. Give him, bring him up here. But Zach Ronaldo should not be playing a regular shift in, in anybody's lineup ever. Derek Ryan is, is good. He's a good late-blooming kid that can play on the fourth line. He can do a lot of things for you. He's not fantastic, but he, but it's not bad for the fourth line. I don't mind it. But overall, this depth is terrible. And I really don't know how they're going to solve it. They've got $3 million in cap space. And uh, you they're, oh, the Joachim Nordstrom could play up there. He had a rough year in Boston last year. Uh, they have Alexander Yeltsin um, playing right defense. The guy has no offense whatsoever. I, I'm not a big fan of him. Their overall depth for forwards and defense right now, besides maybe Jacob Pelche, who's got uh, ways to go, I think, at 5'9", drafted in 2019. He's going to have to play some AHL minutes. There's not much to look forward to right now. So this team has very little depth. If they run into injuries, they're in trouble. I think Calgary Flames could miss the playoffs. I go in the defense they have Giordano and Anderson, that's what I was saying, something like that. Hannafin and Tanov, Shilington and Petrovich. God, please, no. Don't be putting Alex Petrovic in your lineup on a regular basis. Uh, we had him in Edmonton, and the guy just can, does not know what to do with the puck in the defensive end. Yeah, sure, he can hit people, but once he gets a puck on a stick, he might as well just, I don't know, just run the other way. <laughs> he might as well just run away from the puck. He's horrible. Don't do it. Don't be putting him on your defense, whatever you do. So I say it's not looking good. And there's a lot of people out there that say otherwise. Yuso Valamaki is the guy that's going to be up there. Alex Petrovich is not going to be playing. God, please, no, don't do it. Don't have him up there. But the problem is if he gets hurt, Alex Petro Petrovich is probably going to be in. Now they got three million room. They can add a million-dollar guy, half a million-dollar guy on free agency and add some depth to their defense. But if you ask me, this Calgary team is barely making the playoffs, if making the playoffs at all next year, unless there's a complete turnaround. And I do like their coach, by the way, whom I always forget his name, their new coach that he always has. He's going to help out a lot. But as a whole, I just it's going to be tight. Well, that's my full 42%, boys and girls. That's all I have to give today. I hope you're enjoying this fine programming. And uh, remember, steelflyers.com, great website. We just did a, a best of the rest free agent uh, program on you can find on Steel Flyers on YouTube, if you search Steel Flyers, or Sports Fanatic, Fanatic, P-H-A-N-A-T-I-C News. Sports Fanatic News, it's fantastic too. You might want to check that out. I might put that down in the comment section so you can check it out. I'm off now to play with my friend John from Off the Wall Hockey. So that's my full 42. Have a great day, everybody. Lots of love to you.